I'm Eric Berman. I'm the Communications Director here at the Massachusetts Association of Realtors. I'm joined today by Michael McDonough, our General Counsel and Government Affairs Director. Hi, Mike. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Eric. So, Mike, today we're going to be talking about calls for action, or uh, CFAs as we call, to, call them here. What is a CFA? Very simply, Eric, uh, a call for action is an ability for all of our realtors to communicate directly with their member of Congress or with their legislator here in, uh, in Massachusetts. So we have calls for action from NAR, calls for action, calls for action from MAR, um, and they work very simply. It's basically an email that you receive. Uh, it takes probably less than a minute to respond. Okay. So what do the legislators think of these? Well, legislators, I think, really like them. When, they, when a legislator gets a phone call or uh, an email or maybe gets a couple from constituents on an issue, they react. But when they get a whole lot of messages, a whole lot of emails from concerned constituents, then they really are forced to, to act. And that's why calls for action are very effective, getting the message to the legislator and getting them to act. Okay, so now... How often do we use these calls for action? Well, not, not very often, actually. Uh, and uh, if you, if you uh, watch, you know, you'll see only probably a couple of calls for action per year, depending on the issues from the National Association of Realtors, okay. one or two from the Mass Association of Realtors. Again, we try to use them very sparingly, only on very important issues at the right time. Okay, so you mentioned issues, so why don't we I have that as a question. So what are the, some of the issues that we might use a call for action for? Again, we don't use them on every single issue that we work on. We try to save them for important issues okay. and, again, at the right time. Some examples on the federal level, uh, you've seen calls for action on issues like flood insurance, affordability, uh, tax-related issues like the mortgage interest deduction and extending the, the Mortgage Cancellation Debt Relief Act. Okay. And then on the state level, we've used calls for action on issues like real estate transfer taxes or preserving the, uh, the capital gains exclusion for sale of home, primary homes. Uh, that was in 2013. Okay, so we don't use them a lot because we save them for important uh, issues. Do you see any important issues coming up that you could see us using a calls for action for? Uh, certainly. So right now, it's uh, it's at the early you know end of March, early April. Between now and the end of July is really when a lot of activity happens here on the state level. Uh, we are going to be very uh, mindful of issues that come up that are important for real estate issues like zoning, issues that concern taxes and real estate, right. uh, issues concerning uh, energy. And so when, when the time is right, if there's an issue that's important for our industry and for our members and for property owners, uh, we certainly will use the call for action. Okay. So I know every member gets a call for action, but can we broaden the reach of these things? Absolutely. Every realtor gets the call for action unless they've opted out. So hopefully everybody's receiving these. Uh, it takes about a minute to respond, and after, after responding, if anybody wants to share the call for action with a friend, there's an ability to do that at the end by just clicking a button and entering somebody's uh, actual email address. Okay. Uh, Mike, that's all I have for you on calls for action today. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.